This is a, a picture of a fuel cell. It is not working at the present moment. I'm just showing you the installation. As you can see, you've got on the top there, you've got two wires, and a negative and a positive. The negative is the black, and the red is the positive. Down below, you can see the bubble. There, uh, there, there's the bubbler, you can see that. And then down below, you've got the uh, solution um, with the electrolyte in. As you can see, it's just been working, the engine's warm in here. So this is very uh, easy to understand. Now, the big black pipe in front of you there, which is we try to focus with the with the light, is the vacuum pipe, and that comes all the way up here like this. There it is, coming into the hose, comes up here. Then it joins with another pipe over here. We have down here yet another installation. Now these are two different size units. Um, we put this one here because it was once again another convenient spot. This is a smaller unit and can fit into this particular little nook and cranny in this area. And of course it keep, it's kept cool by the air passing through because this is the crush zone between the, the grill and the radiator. Now this particular unit also has a pipe coming off the top. There's the pipe there, there's the vacuum pipe coming off the top of the one-way valve. You can see the blue one-way valve. Both of these units have one-way valves. I'll show you. The there we are, there's the one-way valve. Now this makes the unit safe because the, if there's ever uh, a backlash, it doesn't go into the, into the um, fuel cell, the T-fuel cell. There are the two fuel cells coming together there and they both are vacuumed right up until they reach the uh, air inlet. This is of course the air filter underneath this particular box here. I'll just show you that. You'll see the air filter there. there. There's the air filter. And of course, if you can look on the top end there, you will see a, a little wire with a, a sensor there. And that sensor, and we've got the sensor highlighted. There's the sensor, so we put the, these two pipes on the other side of the sensor uh, because they're bringing in uh, hydrogen and oxygen into the system. And then that is vacuumed straight into the carburetion system up there. There we are. As you can see here is a shot of the battery. There you can see the red positive lead going to the positive. And you can see um, in the center of the picture towards the top uh, the fuse, little fuse box that we have there um, and there on the right right hand of the picture you can see the negative coming up as well onto the battery. There are the two uh, uh, positive wires going through the firewall through the rubber grommet there into the inside of the car. These two wires, one is a return wire and the other one is taking the power to a switch which I'll show you just now and the return wire of course taking it to the battery. The switch, of course, stops the circuit. It breaks the circuit when it is full, when it is thrown. Inside here, you can hardly see anything. You can't see the inside here. As I've just said, you can see the switch. There is the switch. There, it's hidden from view. Uh, this is the chosen method for this client. Um, he wanted the switch to switch off. And this is off now. And when he wants the system on, he switches it over like that, and that closes the circuit on those, red, those two red wires I showed you earlier on. And then once you switch it off, you can switch it off there. This way, of course, it means the, the whole system is isolated away from the circuits of the car, etc. Which, in some instances, can be good. Um, so there we are. Uh, that's the total system. We've, we've seen the fuel cell, we've seen its connections through the vacuum pipes and the various wires. So you can see how simple it is. You've got two wires to worry about, the negative and positive and of course the vacuum pipes and those go into the into the air system after the uh, uh, air filter. Now I'll show you the engine working with that and you'll see a change in the color in the um, in the larger uh, uh, fuel cell and uh, that will be because it is producing uh, HHO gas. Again we now have the engine working and you can see the fuel cell um, just sat there um, doing nothing. There's no, no bubbling or anything going on. What I want you to do is to um, see it working and they'll show the switch inside the car. And there we are immediately the violent reaction. You see it bubbling and roiling inside the, 
fuel cell, everything going white from the uh, production of HHO gas. And that's happening in both units. Unfortunately, you can't see it in the other one because it is, uh, it is uh, hidden from view. And then that, of course, goes up into that black vacuum by the vehicle itself into the system. And so one second it is um, water, and the very next second it is HHO gas, and the very next second it is exploded in the cylinder to replace and displace, uh, uh, say, up to 50, 60, 70, 80 percent of the petrol, and then immediately it reverts back to water vapor again. So this it reverts to water within a couple of seconds. So after it's been converted to HHO gas, it immediately goes back to being water. And there we are. That's that's how the system works. Thank you very much for watching, and I hope that this makes a lot of sense to you. You can see how easy it is just to install. All you've got to do is you can use tie-ons and a bit of um, uh, foam to cushion it against the car, and there we are. You've got a system that can replace on diesels 40% and in petrol engines even as high as 100% in certain vehicles. Thank you very much. Bye.